Guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, in case you guys missed our last video, we're starting to go through uh, diaphragm reads and we're starting to talk about, as, as the closer it's getting to elk season here, talk about elk sounds and natural elk sounds and what you need to do and how you have to place it in your mouth and stuff. So we did that on our last video. This video, we're gonna kind of talk about scenarios and certain things that we do in the woods maybe that you'll hear us say like rambush or slingshot or just, just certain calling scenarios that maybe, I don't know, have been made up. I don't even know if they're real things honestly but they actually have meaning to them what are we going to start with calling just kind of go through the sounds that we you learned like i said learn in the last video we'll put the link in the description below and uh, kind of when and why to use those sounds yeah yeah okay so you may ask locator calls what's so big about that what, what are we trying to do we're trying to get a response from a bull down in a big old canyon or up on a ridge somewhere we're, we, we're trying to find elk it may be country where you can't see them from afar with binoculars we're not trying to spot them and stalk them we're trying to call them in so um, we're going to give out those locator bugles and we're going to mix in some cow calls with it too and usually my very first call out of my mouth is going to be a very very quiet cow call because if there's a bull close by, I don't want to spook him and like make him like, oh crap, what was that? So I want to make a very quiet, quiet cow call to, to start off with, just to make sure there's nothing close by, nothing close by. I'm going to, I'm going to wait two or three minutes, give a little louder cow call and wait. I'm going to let it soak for two or three minutes. Then if I don't hear anything, I'm going to give a bugle, a locator bugle. Now you could do that full bugle like we talked about before, or you could just do that high to low pitch bugle just a kind of a non-threatening bugle and now we're going to be quiet nobody's talking nobody's moving their feet nobody's getting into their their backpack that's a big thing yeah, that, that's a, that's big, a thing. big thing when you nobody breathes these, yeah do you kind of have the same program every time you go to locate it may be country where you can't see them from afar with binoculars we're not trying to spot them and stalk them we're trying to call them in so um, we're going to give out those locator bugles and we're going to mix in some cow calls with it too and usually my very first call out of my mouth is going to be a very, very quiet cow call because if there's a bull close by, I don't want to spook him and like make him like, oh crap, what was that? So I want to make a very quiet, quiet cow call to, to start off with just to make sure there's nothing close by, nothing close by. I'm going to, I'm going to wait two or three minutes, give a little louder cow call and wait. I'm going to let it soak for two or three minutes. Then if I don't hear anything, I'm going to give a bugle, a locator bugle. Now you could do that full bugle like we talked about before or you could just do that high to low pitch bugle just a kind of a non-threatening bugle and now we're going to be quiet nobody's talking nobody's moving their feet nobody's getting into their their backpack that's a big thing yeah, that, that's a, big, that's a thing. big thing your sound doesn't carry very well from the bottom we try to be mid ridge or, or higher on the ridge as possible just to get that sound to cover and a lot of times in this thick uh, terrain your sound won't carry as far as you think, especially if you're down low in the bottom or anything like that. You, or you may even have like the noise of the creek. There might be a bull honking up there like crazy. You just can't hear him because of the, because of the creek. Yeah, and then also like with the three of us and we're in the scenario coming up to locate, the guy's calling here to, to bugle and we're gonna fan out 15, 20 yards to kind of get directional differences on sound and that maybe even face different ways too you know yeah. i mean because you'll see us a lot of times we'll hear something and everybody will look at each other like where was that where from? was that yeah. yeah so trying to pinpoint exactly the direction 
is uh, is definitely definitely beneficial too. A lot of times, a lot of people they like to hear themselves bugle, so they love to sit up there on their perch and do 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 do, you know, and do all that. And sometimes a bull will respond like that, and you'll be bugling over that bull that you could hear actually if you just did a, a small locate bugle or something like that. So switch it up a lot, I would yeah. say. Switch yeah. things up and do different things and to try to make that bull kind of stand out. You wanna run through a couple of sounds real quick? Yeah, and then also after, um, after I've made a bugle, I'll wait a little bit and I'll add another cow call. Maybe he didn't hear my first cow call, but now I've got his attention. He's like, oh, I heard a cow call. And sometimes that will spur him to bugle. Yeah. I kind of like to give a little mix of both, bugles and cow calls. So here's those real quiet cow calls that I was talking about. Very light, two or three of them. Um, and then wait. Now here's that non-aggressive bugle, that locator bugle from high note to low note. Then you're gonna wait for a little bit. Mix in a couple cow calls after you've waited. And then your next bugle is gonna be a little more aggressive. It's gonna be a full bugle with a couple grunts on the end. And then before I make my last bugle, I'm gonna give a little bit of cow calls again in between. That way it just sounds like natural. There's elk up there yep. doing elk stuff. They're communicating with each other. And then the last one I'm gonna give is, I'm gonna give them the shock and awe, the big, nasty lip ball, aggressive, aggressive grunts that says, hey, there's something going on up there. And if that doesn't get it, I'm probably going to walk a little ways. <laughs> yeah, go somewhere so, else. you know, you hear us a lot of times talk about the cat road shuffle, and, and we're going through the same thing, just covering as much ground as possible, just searching for that one biter. Um, so, here's a little uh, clip from the field of us going through on a locator program. Straight down there. Let's go back that way. Okay, so we've gone through a bunch of different calling sounds and scenarios, and one thing that you guys are probably seeing us do a lot, um, I don't know if we show it very often, but it's uh, we have two different signals for cow call and for bugling. So like from say, the shooter to the collar. From the shooter to the collar. It says usually the shooter can see a lot better than the collar. The collar's back quite a ways. So a lot of times the shooter, he's going to be able to see the reaction of the elk that the collar is making. So say Dirk lets out a big bugle, I'm up in their shooter position and that bull just goes to raking right there. And he's just raking. Well, for one, I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna say the bugle's definitely working, that's what we want. And then I'm gonna go like this, which is symbolized for them to rake as well. Or a cow call, he just say, um, he just gets excited on, and I can see him, maybe he doesn't bugle, but I can see what he's doing. And uh, I want him to cow call, I'll go like this. And then, you know, the caller's gonna cow call. Just have signals, it doesn't have to be those, but I don't know, some other signals that we have. Well, the other one too is like, we're moving up. That bull's kind of moved yeah. off. We got an opportunity to move up. We'll use three cow calls, signal to the caller, we're moving up. That's them following tow. Yes. Slingshot. Yeah. Engage. Yeah. So this <laughs> engage a slingshot. It was inspired by the movie Talladega Nights. Yes, it was. <laughs> Cal Naughton Jr. and Ricky Bobby. <laughs> Ricky Bobby always won though. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you ain't first, you're last. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So slingshot. That is uh, it, We've used this in Wyoming when I shot yeah. my bull. Yeah. yeah.
Yeah. Years on yep. Land of the Free 1.0. We just actually watched this in one of our story times. If you haven't checked that out, link in the description. But go ahead. The shooter's sitting out front, right? Collar's back here a ways. The bull comes in, hangs up, which is pretty typical scenario. Mm. A lot of times they just, that's, that's elk. They hang up. So the, the guy that's the caller, he's back quite a few yards, you know, 50, 60, 70 yards behind the shooter. Um, the bull hangs up, will not come no matter what the caller is doing. Keep within sight distance, line of sight open with your with your caller and shooter because you can do these, these little signs and see, keep an eye on each other and know what's going on a little better. You may want to do, you know, give them a, like a little signal, like slingshot, okay? That, that means Trent, as the shooter, he's going to rip a big nasty challenge bugle from the shooter position. That paints a little picture in that bull's mind's eye that that bull that has, he's been talking to has covered some ground and moved up. And a lot of times that's all it takes is just moving up or having your call a lot closer to him to get him to come out or show himself. And he may think, oh, he's right there. He'll walk out broadside to take a peek too late. Then you can get a shot. Yep. Yeah. So Rambush. Um, Rambush has never actually, I don't know if it's ever really worked. <laughs> But it's effective as heck. We work for me. Full, full, yeah, yeah. Oh, Doug we, calls it. Or, or, Doug. <laughs> Doug Flutie. <laughs> Better than Dick Flutie. Uh, Dirk, Dirk calls it the whiz bang. The wee ipe whiz bang, if you wee will. Oh, is that what you call it? Yeah. 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 So the the ram bush is like bull uh, classic case, like Dirk was saying, hung up. You'll, you'll see that a lot, and it does happen quite often. He's only going to come as far as he's going to come, and that's where he feels comfortable being. So what we're going to do is try to get something in between us and his line of sight and take off running pretty much and making all the noise that you can make, bugling, screaming, and everything, and kind of have that little shock and awe effect. And as a shooter, you got to be really ready at the time because if it happens to where he like takes a step and you can get a shot, it's really quick. But um, and that's and that's usually where I that's where I bring out the bark scream. Right. So the bark is me saying show yourself, and I'm challenging him, and I'm moving up to say all right, all right, let's get it on. And a lot of times that just gives that bull all the confidence, like okay, it's my turn to move. Yep. And they'll walk out from their little spot, and you can get that shot. Five minutes into the duration of calling yeah. and, and things have been kind of in that gridlock and you're trying to break that lock and this is kind of one of those kind of the last card yeah you know, this is uh, the last card yeah, yeah. of okay th we're either gonna bust this bull or we're gonna kill it and so we'll pull out the old rambush we up whiz bang as you call it we, and yeah. uh, you go charging and it's one of those as a shooter arrow back in the quiver run cover as much ground as fast as you can in that scenario get ready again and do that bark screen. Yeah, and a lot of times where I'm hunting, it's thick country, so that bull's locked up at 50, 60 yards. So I wanna go at least halfway. And taking that little leap of faith for him, he hears me coming halfway. And, and you wanna add realism. You don't wanna be quiet. You don't wanna pussyfoot up there. As I'm going up, I'm trying to make extra noise. I'm looking for limbs to stomp on, kick stuff around. I want him to know I'm coming to fight. Sometimes, Sometimes you'll yeah. find a bull that's kind of a chicken and he will run off. And it can even be a big old herd bull yeah. just because don't, he don't want to fight. But I've had it more times often than not. They'll stand their ground and they'll just want to pop out to see you. You got to look at elk behavior. They're very visual. They, they, they trust their eyes first usually. So they want to hear, they want to see. So you've fooled his ears already. Now he wants to see you. If you watch bulls in Yellowstone, they bugle back and forth. They come together, they get close, they look at each other, and they do that little parallel march thing. They want to size each other up a little bit. If that bull has come from a long ways and hung up, 
he's waiting for you to show yourself so now you guys can mix it up and dance, right? He wants to see how big you are. He wants to show you how big he is. Just because he's hung up is not really something you did wrong. I think Elk have been doing this since the dawn of time. Larry D. Jones talked yeah. about hang yeah. hangups. From ever since people have been bow hunting elk, they've been hanging up. So you have to kind of remember, it's like you, maybe you didn't do something wrong. He's just waiting for your next move. So this is why this, this tactic works so well. Sometimes it's better to be silent and let them wander off. Don't say a word and let them wander off and get to that location or within shooting distance of where you think that location is. And uh, a lot of times we'll just, you know, we'll just shut up. We won't say a word. Let him wander off and think, okay, this guy got scared and he's done. And then you get closer to them and then bugle. And a lot of times he'll feel comfortable enough to come right come back, back to that, to that position to where you could get a shot yeah. at him. So sometimes being quiet is actually a, a good thing too. And bulls do this to you a lot of times. Let's say you're bugling a bull and then he clams up on you. Yeah, That's happened so many times. What do you do? You bugle, you bugle, you're like, where is he? Yeah. If you do that reverse, you flip the script on these bulls sometimes, and you do that reverse, and you shut up on him, sometimes they'll break the silence like, wait, where is he at? Is he coming? Is he, where's he at? So it kind of it kind of gets in their head a little bit. Yep. Right, right. Sound of silence, use it. Write that down. Write that down. You know, a lot of times we hunt in groups where we've got a shooter and a caller, and so we're kind of going through that setup, and the initial setup's kind of really important. Like Dirk kind of touched on, Shooter always has visual to the caller, caller has visual to the shooter, so we can kind of read the situation. But what we're always looking at is that if the bull's coming in on a straight line, we go to the downwind side as a shooter to move off, off that track where that bull's coming into that sound, you'll get that broadside shot. And a lot of times too, they'll kind of come in as they're coming in and they're not seeing the visual, they're gonna to switch to that scent side of life and they're gonna start drifting downwind on that arc. So yeah, that's a, that's a very good point. And you can do this with solo calling too. Solo calling is kind of a bag of tricks. You, you have to really paint a picture of deceit. You want him to think you're here, but then after that call, you want to sneak over here 15, 20 yards in a downwind fashion on that same arc you're talking about. He's going to probably come right to that spot, but if he gets wise and wants to smell you, he's going to come down here and try to arc on you. And that's where you want to intercept him down there too. So it's just kind of being smart on your setups. We covered this in the last video a little bit, uh, a lot of the calling and, and, and the elk sounds that we make. We did One thing that we didn't cover was like a muffled bugle, say putting it behind your back or something of that nature, or even putting your hand. We've done that to where it's, it sounds like it's a long ways away, possibly, and uh, it's just playing with the tone of the bugle. So the bull thinks maybe, oh wow, he's further than I, than I think he might be. But it's amazing how elk, when you bugle from a place, and they could be hundreds of yards away, they know exactly where you're standing when you're there. Like Dirk said, move like 15 yards. They've been doing it, you know, all their lives. They're pretty impressive how they know exactly where the noise came from. Yeah, and Dirk, you solo hunt quite a bit. Like, yeah. what's kind of some of those tips that you you would say that I use guy... that? I use that a lot. That actual that muffled bugle. The bull's he's starting to come your way, so he hasn't maybe got to that point where he's gonna hang up. So before he ever hangs up, but you can hear brush popping. You know, he's 60, 70 yards out. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna give him that little, that little deceitful call where I bugle a little quieter. So you don't have to bugle nearly as quiet. It changes the back pressure in your tube. So you still get to articulate those notes, but you can also make it a lot quieter. So I cover the end of my tube, but I leave it open a little bit, you know, three fingers covering it with just some little cracks here. And then I don't blow nearly as hard. And then I put it the opposite direction or I cast it a different direction from where I'm standing. Maybe I want him to come over here because I got a better shooting lane. Maybe I want him to come over here because I'll have a longer period of time when he'll be in a good spot for the wind. So I'll just kind of direction it wherever I want it. It'll be a real quiet bugle like this. And if he's out 50, 60, 70 yards from you, you just made it sound like you're another 50, 60, 70 yards from where you're actually at. So it makes him a lot harder to pinpoint. So he may, be, he may not lock up or hang up where he initially would have before. Yeah, and, and so in the last video too, we kind of, we went through all those sounds and I, I saw some questions in the comments kind of talking about when and why. So let's kind of roll through some of these lip ball. Why, why use a lip ball? So a lot of times when I'm bugling a really big rally nasty sound and bugle uh, bull I want to match him I want to sound like him sometimes those big bulls if you sound too squeaky 
and there's a lot of people out there who are going to tell you a lot of different things, but for me, this is what's worked. Right. I want to sound just as big as him. I don't want to sound like a little wimp because a lot of times he's like, yeah, 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 get out of here, get out of here, kid, you're bothering me. But if you sound big, like you're a threat, he might take your threat serious and want to fight. And herd bulls, big, mature herd bulls, I feel like they have kind of an ego. They're like, they know they're pretty badass yeah. they know they're the the bull of the mountain so they have a little bit of confidence and especially in that middle of the day type thing they know their cows are all bedded down they're not going to go anywhere they're going to be very defensive of that spot so that's where i'm going to be using that lip ball um if he sounds like a big growly bull i'm using a big growly bull some guys call it you know a, a bull calling cows type type bugle um i'm not really exactly sure on any kind of a language that very very well may be um Bulls might do that whenever they have a hot cow there. Or maybe they just do it when they're really wound up uh, sexually or they're just mad. I don't know. Yeah. I'm not an elk. But I, I know I use it a lot and it seems to work for me pretty well. So again, on, on that last calling video, we kind of talked, Dirk went through on the bark scream, bark chuckle. Well, the first time I saw him, him use it in the field and it, it kind of all clicked some, from some other experiences that I've had in the field of hearing bulls bark and do that bark chuckle. When do you use that and why? So bark chuckle, bark scream, you don't want to just get out of the pickup and start walking through the field just doing it. Just barking. That's, that's the wrong time. That's just the wrong time to not do it. Not a good it. idea? No, no, no. No, you want to kind of wait till you get that stalemate in your calling sequence. Let's say you've been calling to this bull for a certain amount of time. He's came in, he has locked up. He's, he's held up out there and he won't move a muscle. That's a lot of times where you hear them do that, yeah. that yep. bark or, or their bark chuckle. Um, a lot of times they'll, they'll, they're getting they're getting either nervous or they're kind of like, no man, show yourself. So they'll kind of bark and then they'll kind of do these chuckle things. He didn't smell me. He didn't see me. Um, a lot of people say, you never want to make a bark noise. That means danger to an elk. But not necessarily. At certain times, yes. But if you're in a calling scenario, you, you know that he you, that you haven't been busted and he starts doing that that's the time to start doing it right back to him. Sometimes it calms him down. And it calms him down. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's an elk. He but, is an elk yeah, after that all. That is an elk. Yeah. Or you're saying, hey man, I'm an elk, but he, you're, you're kind of calling his bluff too. So I use that bark chuckle in that kind of a situation. Now, if I want to move up on him, let's say we've, we've, we've pulled out every rabbit out of every hat to try to call this bull in and he won't come in. He, he's still locked up. I want to challenge him. I'm going to bark saying show yourself and then i'm going to scream then we're going to move up do the ram bush which we talked about earlier it's it's the certain time and it's kind of like raking too yep. guys will will you don't want to as soon as you hear a bull bugle 500 yards across the canyon start raking no that's i i, I usually reserve my raking for once that bull holds up he comes in he hangs up a lot of times bulls hang up and they yes. begin they start raking. raking. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the time I'm gonna start raking, right? I'm not gonna quite do it until it's time. And at that time he starts raking, I start raking. And usually he'll rake, 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 work himself up. That bull, he rips a big bugle. Now I'm gonna bugle right over the top of him with a challenge bugle, very aggressive. And sometimes it's just that one scenario, he'll break loose and come in. Mm -hmm. It may take four or five of those of that scenario to get him to come in. Sometimes he may just move off and then you take, you take in the game again and try to push on him a little bit. Yeah, so we've got some few clips more, just kind of go through those scenarios in the field and here's how it unfolds.
All right, guys, this has been kind of a fun rundown. I'm getting pumped for elk season. Like, it does I, make I, I, like it, it gets the people added, going. Gets the people Give going. They're provocative. Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, I just really appreciate you guys clicking on this video, checking it out. If you do us one favor, hit that thumbs up button. And uh, if we brought any value, subscribe. Because, like we've kind of talked about, born and raised, we're here to entertain, educate, and inspire. And uh, hopefully, we've done that today. And, and Big Dirt. shout out to Dirk too. Dirk the Bugler Durham, go check him out. He'll have his, we'll have his link in the description below as well for his YouTube channel. The um, Bugler. The Bugler. The Bugler. The bugler. Um, so uh, yeah, at the end of the day, guys, there's tons of tactics. There's tons of different things that you can do other than just going out there and throwing out a simple bugle and hoping that something comes in. So go out there, try some of this stuff. Maybe, you know, when elk hang up, try some of these tactics. And uh, a lot of times, you know, you'll learn something just like we've learned and we're still not done learning. That's no, for sure. yeah. So. so if you guys can just hit the comment section below and tell me what your favorite tactic is and what those kind of tips or things that you've learned over the years. I'd love to love to learn some more. No worries over nickels and dimes or a nine to five grind. I gotta get loose sometimes. In trouble.